Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing something a little different. Instead of going fishing, I'm going to make fishing lures. And I'm going to 3D print all these lures. I selected three different models that I'm going to print from. So one's a flat side crankbait, one's a regular crankbait, and another one is a square bill. And I'm going to print these in different sizes too, just to get a little bit more variety. So I found all three of these models online through Thingiverse. And I'll put the link in the description to all of them, so if you guys want to use them, feel free to. I didn't make them, so I'm not trying to take credit for designing the models, but they are in the link in the description if you want to maybe do this yourself. So I have all the, the models prepped for printing, and uh, some of them uh, take upwards of 20 hours to do. So it's going to be a little bit of a wait for to get all of them done. So this is kind of what they look like when they're done printing. This is just one of them. And uh, it kind of prints extra on the sides and then it prints it up layer by layer. This one's the flat side crank bait and it prints both halves on each side and then the lip on this one is separate. So now after printing them, I just have to trim the extra stuff on the outside. Which doesn't take too long. So now that I got all the edges off, you can see how they kind of fit together. And then this will stick in here. I do a little bit of sanding on the lip, but I mean, you can get the basic look out of it. And then on the, on the in, underside of the, each half, you can see that they've got little pockets that were printed in here. You just have to pop these out and then what I'm doing is I'm going to put little BBs for like a BB gun inside of this so I can get a little bit of a rattle. So now that I got both these finally pitted out, what I like to do is take a sheet of uh, sandpaper and then just scrape them on the, bottom, on the inside half of both of them. Just so that it makes it make sure that it's flat and then also it kind of scuffs it up which makes it easier to glue and i'm going to sand down the lip a little bit too There we go. Finally got her sand down enough. And there's what she's gonna look like. But first I gotta run the through wire through, then add the BBs and the weights. So what I did to prepare each half is I put a little dab of glue inside of each of these little pockets. Then I smushed a tiny little sinker down so they fit in there flush so that they fit in there perfectly. And next up, just have to measure out for the through wire. So I'm going to do one slot length across the body, then two, and then another little bit for this bottom piece that's going to the bottom treble. And then I'll cut it. And then I'm just going to measure about how far I want it to be. And then that's when I'll start bending it. So there, I got it fitting in there pretty well. 
Next up, just gotta add some BBs. Don't wanna put too many in there, otherwise just won't make the right sound. That should be plenty there. Then I'm gonna take this plastic cement and then put some of that on it. That should be good. And then just gonna place the other half on top of it and then make sure it all fits in and meshes with the other half and the through wire. That should be good there. And then now just gonna clamp her down for a little while. I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue on this clamp just so it can grip it a little bit better on the slanted side. And there we go. Got the front and the back clamped together. And don't need to worry about the gap too much because afterwards, after it dries for a little bit, I'm gonna put a bead of hot glue around there just to kind of seal it up. And then I can sand it down a little bit and then use a lighter to kind of smooth it out. And then it should be ready for painting. So I've given this a little bit of time to dry. So now I'm just gonna run that little bead of hot glue around the edges just to seal it up nice. So now that that hot glue is dry, I'm just gonna take a knife and Cut off the excess. So that's pretty good. So now I'm just gonna quick run a lighter across it just to kind of melt it and keep it flush. Now I'll just put the clamp back on and let it continue to dry. So I got all the lures all taped up and ready to paint. I'm not the greatest of artists, so I have a wife here to help with painting. So don't judge any of my painting skills. <laughs> we got 10, 10 lures to do total. It should be fun. So we got all of them painted and now we're just gonna let them dry for a little bit. Then we're gonna put a clear coat over the top of it just to make it a little bit more protected from fish and other elements. I let the enamel dry for 24 hours. So now I'm just gonna spray a couple of coats of the clear coating on it. Well, I just finished putting the clear coat on them. Now it's time to put the hardware. I got the old trouble hooks and a bunch of these split rings. And then they'll be finished and ready to use. So there's the finished product for one of them. Doesn't look too shabby. Just got to do another nine of them. Got the hardware on them all, and they look pretty good. Can't wait to test them out. I'll be doing a homemade lure challenge here in a little bit, but we just got dumped on with a whole bunch of snow, so that's going to have to wait a little bit. When I get to testing them out, I'll put the link in the description for that video so you guys can watch it after you finish this one. Thanks for watching.